WCBI News at 10 starts now. One Pontotoc County girl is dead. Two other children injured after a boat crash on Smith Lake. Thanks for joining us tonight at 10. Alabama law enforcement agency Marine Troopers say the crash happened near the Corinth boat ramp in Winston County, Alabama. They tell us nine people were on board the 19-foot deck boat-style vessel. Marine Troopers say that a 14-year-old boy and 12-year-old girl were taken to an area hospital. Tragically, another 12-year-old girl died. Now, this is the second crash on that lake in the last two days. Last night, five people were injured in a crash in Rock Creek. Both accidents are still under investigation. Alouns County man is recovering after a serious fireworks accident last night in Crawford. Our Quentin Smith speaks with family members about the incident. Quentin, how is everyone holding up? Well, Scott, as you can imagine, family members are still shaken by this accident. They tell me they were all gathered together, listening to music, and just enjoying the holiday. They were getting ready to light up the sky with fireworks until things suddenly took a turn for the worse. It's no secret that Pam Turner loves to cook and spend time with her family members. So for the 4th of July weekend, she traveled down to Crawford to do just that. It was like a big happy, my dear happy family, you know. We was out here cooking and eating and listening to music. And then once it got dark, we started firing the fireworks up for the kids. However, when they began lighting fireworks, that fun quickly came to a halt. Once it started getting dark, the big guys... They came with the fireworks, and my trail went to go light one, and it just blew up on them. Turner says her cousin, 34-year-old Montreal Turner, was struck by a firecracker outside a home on Long Street around 9 o'clock Thursday night. She says he was doing a firework display for the kids in the neighborhood when a device fired and struck him in the face. It was out there shooting, and all of a sudden, he, I would turn at him, boom, a big explosion, and I just seen him going up. And I ran, and uh, the, the, the sting had blowed up, and it hit him in the face. Yeah, I believe he was saying that he couldn't see. He couldn't see, and blood was just gushing out of him. So, you know, it was, like, not good to look at him. It was unbearable to see the blood coming out of him like that. Hours later, blood stains can still be seen on the street where the 34-year-old was laying. Family members say they aren't sure of the exact firecracker that caused this accident. All they know is it was a big one. One of those that goes straight up, I guess you could say it's like a rocket, but it was like fatter than it. Turner admits this accident put a damper in their holiday spirit. Now, she says they're going to rely on their faith and each other to get them through this tough time. Leave it in the hands of the Lord. He always take care of us. We just got to pray. You know, he had um, up on his eye. He had a broken bone up on his eye and his eye. And we just want to pray. Everybody just pray for him. Now, Turner underwent surgery at a Jackson hospital this morning to treat a gash in his eyeball and a broken bone near his eye. At last check, he is recovering and is in stable condition. Scott? All right, Quentin, thanks very much. If your holiday plans include time on the water, you're not alone. Law enforcement agencies will also be cruising the waterways, but with a little preparation and common sense, you should be okay. Courtney Ann Jackson has more. You'll hold up a life jacket. All right, your boat registration. Yes, sir. Safety checks. The Department of Wildlife, Fisheries, and Parks will be busy stopping boaters. Be careful. All weekend. Much common sense. If everybody knows that they're going to get checked two or three times a day while they're on the water, they're more likely to, to, to be safe operators and have everything that they're supposed to have compared to somebody that, that knows they're not going get to get checked. Operation Dry Water is a national initiative with the main focus being to crack down on boating under the influence. And rules of driving on the water aren't as different from the road as some may think. The same two things is you got to operate on the right side of the channel, just like the right side of the road. And it's the same level as far as level of intoxication on the road as it is the water is .08. Officers will be looking for signs of impairment as they do their checks, but the end goal for all the checks is for folks to make it off the water and home safely. Normally on a boating weekend, we may have two boats on the water between Highway 43 and Low Head Dam. Uh, this weekend, we've got about six boats on the water covering that to include uh, the main lake reservoir. If y'all will hold up a life jacket apiece. 
It's not that this is anything new, just a higher concentration of enforcement since there's more activity expected this weekend. Courtney Ann Jackson, WCBI News. A large shed goes up in flames late this afternoon. Check this out. You can see the flames consuming the shed and everything inside. The shed was behind a home on Pleasant Hills Road. Lowndes County District 3 volunteer firefighters, they were called out to the blaze around 530 this evening. Dark smoke could be seen for several blocks. A boat was inside that shed and completely destroyed. Fire crews had to call for backup to help keep that fire contained. No word on what started the blaze. Time now to get a first look at our Friday night forecast. We'll send things over to Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. Hey there, Keith. Hey, Scott. Right now in Columbus, we have the waxing crescent moon shining right there on a very warm Friday night. 81 degrees in Columbus. It still feels like 86 here. Calm wind, so not a lot of natural relief out there. Some spots are already into the upper 70s, especially outside of the city limits. 81 and Tupelo, though. So it's a warm night. Some storms up here in Arkansas and Tennessee, uh, those are falling apart. And it doesn't look like they're going to reach our area. But we do have a chance for more storms around here tomorrow. A better chance than what we had today. But the heat stays with us. Got 95. The heat index 100 to about 105. So be prepared. The full forecast coming up. In the days before integration, Henderson High School was the academic home for African American students in Starkville. This weekend, former students from across the country are catching up with old friends to reminisce. And as our Tyler Hall finds out, the alumni of Henderson High are using the bonds they formed in the past to help build a brighter future. Henderson High School alumni are coming back home to meet with old friends and give back to their hometown. The former students have created a scholarship fund, and President Charles Ware says this year they have given out over $11,000. Tonight, they are connecting those students with the people who made the scholarships possible. Uh, over the last five years, uh, we've given out $56,500 to graduates of Starkville High School and other schools in Octavia County. Dr. Shirley James Hanshaw says the reunion is not only about remembering the past, but also improving the community's future. Not only does it inspire the current and future generations of young scholars to uh, continue uh, their education, uh, to matriculate I should say at uh, institutions of higher learning, but it also serves uh, to um, honor those on whose shoulders we stand. Ware wants everyone to know that any student can apply for the scholarship. We are part of this community, this entire community. So the young men and women that we're giving these scholarships to, they're all Starkville High. Reporting from Starkville, Tyler Hull, WCBI News. All right, for tonight, we're looking at warm and muggy conditions. Almost forgot about the T's here. Warm and muggy, partly cloudy. It's going to be a sultry night. Your weekend forecast is next. Your WCBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. Some friendly, cow, some friendly cows enjoying the shade earlier this morning. What a warm day. We all got to get into the shade or someplace cool on these warm summer days. Now, check out the sunset. This is from West Alabama. There's the setting sun right there. There's a little bit of haze obscuring that. So the sun looked a little extra yellow and orange. And that haze was some Saharan dust. You can see it plotted on the map right there. And that dust came all the way over from Africa with the trade winds and it got into our area. It's been hanging around the southeast for the last couple of days here. Back into our region today. That's our Alpha Insurance Camera Network, our hazy sunset on our Friday night. As we check out things moving forward, more heat, more humidity, scattered storms daily uh, for a while here. We're stuck in this pattern. Maybe a few strong storms from time to time. No widespread organized severe weather expected. However, uh, can't rule out some gusty storms that could produce some heavy downpours and some frequent lighting. Pretty warm across the lower 48 right now. Typical summer weather for July and complexes of storms roaming around the region too. A lot of our stuff is actually pulsing down because it's been primarily driven by the heating of the sun. But some more organized activity back to the northwest, hence the storm reports there over the last 12 hours. But locally, nothing going on in our area. There's this one dying shower near Russellville, Alabama, and also a dying batch of activity uh, here in eastern Arkansas moving towards Memphis. But here's the last couple of hours. Notice the downward trend in activity here. We've been staying dry. 
Uh, so it looks like this will probably fall apart before it could get here, but what has been happening up north today will likely be a little bit farther south tomorrow. So still a chance for some uh, wet weather toward north tonight. Uh, this is through noon tomorrow on Saturday. Probably not, not a lot going on for us here, but after that, once we get into the afternoon and evening, a better chance for some of those storms. And look at those numbers for highs here, folks. We're looking at low and mid-90s. The heat index well into the triple digits, and we were in the 100 to 106 range today. Uh, so some of these numbers could be a little bit lower than what we may actually experience tomorrow before the storms happen to form. Tomorrow afternoon, notice how the clouds start to build up, and we'll see clusters of storms around that really will be random where these go. Uh, there's actually a little upper air disturbance trying to move on through the region this weekend, so that could actually initiate some of this stuff, and wherever it starts, it will propagate somewhere. And then some of those boundaries get put out there, and we may see more storms. So, you know, your standard summer weather pattern here with these pop up showers and storms. Same story in the Sunday, too, and probably next week. Now, if you're asking, are uh, any of these days going to be washouts? Probably not, but we're going to have these scattered storms primarily during the heating of the day. Warm during the day, highs in the 90s, Scott, lows in the 70s. Yeah. The Southside Heritage and Blues Festival is underway here in Columbus. The two-day event kicked off tonight with a balloon release at the Hank Aaron Park. Tonight is unofficially known as Soul Food Night. There was free fried catfish, spaghetti casserole, coleslaw and sodas. Tomorrow the festival moves to Townsend Park for live music and family activities. The festival is held the first Friday and Saturday after Independence Day. Delicious and nutritious. Nutritious. That's kind of hard to say. Just how healthy are those shakes and loaded teas? A closer look when we come back. You're watching WCBI News at 10 with Scott Martin. Welcome back, everyone. It's the latest fitness craze. Loaded teas and meal replacement shakes. Shops that serve them are popping up statewide. These new drinks come with lots of promises giving you more energy, burning fat, even claim making you look and feel younger. Our Cash Matlock talks with a local shop owner and an area dietitian to see how the drinks measure up. Heather Hudson mixes dozens of loaded teas and shakes every day for her customers at 39759 Nutrition. It's just people having a healthy option. She says the typical tea on the menu contains zero sugar and only 24 calories, while the average shake contains 250 calories and 24 grams of protein and can even be used to substitute a meal instead of going through the fast food drive through You know, when it's hot, the teas really are refreshing and good. And then the meal replacement, if you want to have that for breakfast, you kind of have to shake for breakfast and drink the tea all day. Area dietitians say you should do your homework when it comes to healthy eating. Anything that you hear about new or uh, any type of food or product that is promoting to have some type of health benefit, you want to ask questions and find out the nutritional information and whatever type of item that it might be. We were always willing to show, you know, any packaging or whatever. Um, that has got literally every every ingredient that we have, but the Herbalife has you know been around for 25 years, so it's it's a proven proven company. The teas at 39759 have 200 milligrams of caffeine, which is equal to about two cups of coffee. And for some people, this may be too much. Especially if you have a type of medical condition like heart disease, um, high blood pressure, kidney disease. Um, certain ingredients in those products might actually cause adverse effects and then also if you are taking particular medications. Any of those types of situations you'll want to consult your doctor before you try any type of new product. But Hudson says her shop has something for everyone. One of the ingredients we can live, leave out if you wanted that and then we also have kid drinks and it's it's doesn't have any caffeine in it. It's just it's kind of essentially like a Gatorade, it's just a little bit, it's got vitamins and minerals in for them. And as far as the shakes go, dietitian Patricia Heflin says one meal replacement every now and then may not be too harmful. We need a wide variety of foods. We need protein, which the shakes I do believe contain, but we also need uh, vitamins and minerals through fruits and vegetables, and we need fiber from those whole foods. Both agree that it's important to know the facts about your food. Hudson says over 200 nutritional beverage shops have opened up in, the, in Mississippi alone over the past few years. The high school football tour makes its way to East Union. More on the urchins coming up right after the break.
Sears Sports on WCBI. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Chris Bolton. The next stop in the high school football tour checks in with the East Union Urchins. Led by head coach Kevin Walden, the Urchins are excited for what's in store this upcoming season as they look to continue the momentum from a 7-4 season last year. East Union is stop number 12 on the high school football tour. WCBI's 60 Schools in 60 Days is brought to you by Sparklight. The East Union Urchins come into 2019 ready to pick up where they left off last season. The running division champs returned eight starters on both sides of the ball, giving the Urchins rare experience heading into the fall. Experience is going to be our uh, strength this year. Uh, we, we started seven freshmen on, on offense last year, so you know that their experience is, should carry over well into the upcoming season. We had a great spring. Uh, and it, you know, the first half of the summer has been really good. We've had good attendance. Our kids worked really hard in the weight room. I've, you know, we've seen increase on strength and speed. So we're looking forward to you know the, the next half of the summer and preparing for the upcoming season. We're definitely working harder than we did last season, and uh, we're really focusing on our first game. And we know we're we're, we're planning on winning the division title again. We're getting stronger, faster. We're getting better individually, which will probably help out on the field. Well, we really got to execute our new offense we just installed and try to just do our best at that. The new offense will be key in their success as the urchins look to replace running back Joel Wilkinson. It's be hard to replace a kid like Joel. Um, he, we sort of built our offense around him the past four seasons, but you know the you know he. He, he was such a good leader, and, and his legacy, he left these guys, you know, just, just being tough and always being there, and you could count on him. I think it rubbed off on a lot of the younger guys, and, and he set a good example, so I think they're going to carry on, you know, what, what he left for our program. Well, all of us have to step up. Like, anybody can be like that guy like Joel now, so it's really just up to anybody who steps up. But we're trying to fill that void uh, with the passing game and I think our running backs can get the job done in their part. With the new season comes new competition, but East Union continues to have its eyes set on another region crown. One game at a time, uh, our hard work, we hope, and, and uh, you know, we, we lost uh, Baldwin and Bruce out of our division. We've got Mantachi and Potts Camp coming in. Uh, we just, you know, I, we're just going to uh, Hope that our hard work and the effort that these guys give, uh, you know, we've got great kids that they will carry us through the season. We just got to stay tough and fight hard and execute our new offense. Reporting in East Union, Chris Bolton, WCBI Sports. 60 Schools in 60 Days with East Union High School was brought to you by Farmers and Merchants Bank. Next up on the high school football tour, tomorrow we'll take a look at Mantachi. Then Sunday, we'll see how our friends and Bruce are doing this upcoming season as we preview them. Then Monday, we'll look at the Calhoun City Wildcats. And Tuesday, we'll take a look at Belmont. Now, for those keeping track at home, you can go to our Twitter and Facebook accounts at WCBI Endzone to see the schedule. And if you miss any stops along the way, you can always go watch them on our website at WCBI.com. Now, Hell State Hoops continues its international dominance using another big game from Jessica Carter and Rakia Jackson to, well, pretty much beat the brakes off of Slovakia. As you see, the final is 92 to 52. Rakia Jackson continues to get buckets. She had a solid performance as she scored 16 points, had five boards, and also two dimes. Now, Mississippi State advances to the medal bracket to take on China on Sunday. That game will be at 1 o'clock Central. And in the FIBA U19 World Cup, another Mississippi State standout continues to put up big numbers helping the team as, he, uh, as USA gets the nod against Russia, 90-85. to 85. Reggie Perry spazzes out against Russia as he drops a team-high 28 points. He also brought in eight boards, three steals, two blocks, did on the offensive and defensive end. Uh, the win gives the U.S., uh, puts them forward to the semis as they will take on Lithuania. That game will be tomorrow at 11.30 a.m., and it will also be streaming on ESPN+. That's all we have for sports. We have a last week's your forecast coming up after the break. Here's our toasty seven-day forecast here, uh, Scott. Low and mid-90s during the day. Plenty of heat, plenty of humidity. Uh, more of those storms will be around the region. If you're lucky, you'll get one of those storms. If you're unlucky, 
like me, you'll just have wilting flowers. <laughs> Get a water hose, Keith. Uh, and I do have a water hose. I'll find it, though. True, true. All right, have a good weekend, everyone.